Let us scrutinize the stylistic component of the poem. We shall begin with the title. I have said on numerous occasions that titles are of two kinds, additive and emphasizative. An additive title adds to the semantic content generated by the body of the poem. It provides something new to the semantic content. If an additive title is removed, the semantic content of the poem suffers significant damage. A good exemplification of this, a good exemplification of the additive title is Lady Lazarus of Sylvia Plath. An emphasizive title does not add anything new to the semantic content of the poem. An emphasizive title only emphasizes or stresses one particular aspect of the semantic content generated by the body of the poem. When an emphasizative title is removed, the semantic content of the poem does not suffer any significant damage. A good exemplification of the emphasizative title is the poem Daddy of Sylvia Plath. Now let us confront the question whether the poem or a discussion the Thought Fox of Ted Hughes has an additive title or an emphasizative title. This is a rather tricky question. For the title of the poem is neither wholly additive nor wholly emphasizative. The title of the poem has two components, Thought and Fox. All of it, Fox plays an emphasizative role. Because the word fox appears in the text of the poem, in the body of the poem. And the component fox of the title of the poem plays only an emphasizing role, serves only to stress that particular aspect of the thematics of the poem. On the other hand, the first component of the title of the poem, thought, is an additive component, plays an additive role because it adds something new to the thematics of the poem. It adds something which is not present in the semantic content generated by the body of the poem. Thus, we are driven to the conclusion that the title of the poem is partly additive and partly emphasizative, and this is something rather unusual. The Thought Fox consists of 24 lines organized in six stanzas of four lines each. Thus, the poem has a very regular stanzaic pattern and to that extent it's a poem in traditional verse. However, the poem has no regular rhyme scheme. It is true that there are lines which rhyme in the poem, but one is unable to detect a proper rhyme scheme. To top it off, the poet refuses to use the meter line. I have tried to subject the lines of the thought fox to scansion and I have failed. Thus, out of the three parameters, the thought fox displays only one parameter, that is the regular stanzaic pattern. It fails to observe the second and the third conditions necessary to make it a poem in traditional verse. I think we can say that the Thought Fox is a free verse poem, but a free verse poem which is divided into regular stanzas, a free verse poem which displays a regular stanzaic pattern. Part of the strength of the poem 
is the poet's remarkable ability to play with linear length. The poet deliberately juxtaposes relatively long lines with relatively short lines for generating special effects. This is one of the technical strengths of the poem. The fox in the poem is simultaneously a real fox and a symbol. It is a representation. It is a representation of, it is a symbol of poetic inspiration. The fox stands for the inspiration that drives the poet to write his poem. The poem has a first person narrator. This is made clear by the very opening line of the poem, by the very opening words of the poem. The poem begins with the first person pronoun, I. I imagine. The first person narrator provides a sense of intimacy, a sense of closeness, a sense of rapport to the poem. The poet makes use of a number of figures of speech. One of these is alliteration. There are several instances of alliteration in the poem. The repetition of the same sound in the poem. As in midnight moments, something else is alive, deeper within darkness, body that is bold to come. The poet makes use of onomatopoeia in the construction, the clock ticks, the clock ticks. One can almost hear the ticking of the clock in the room at midnight. The poet makes use of synecdoche when he says two eyes. What he means is not just two eyes, but the entire fox. And thus he here we have an example of a part standing for the whole. There is no doubt that the thought fox of Ted Hughes is one of his most technically perfect and artistically realized poems and one of the finest animal poems ever written in the English language.